Well, procrastinators, and before we get started this week, just know that in this video I'll be talking about very, very unfun things like suicide, rape, sexual harassment. Uh, I just wanted to talk about video games. Video games, the flashy things on the screen that go blip. That's all I ever wanted to do. When I was a kid, video games were awesome. The blue hedgehog ran, the fat plumber jumped, and the whatever Kirby is ate people and shut out stars. Video games used to be so simple. The biggest controversies were stuff like Sega fucking up whatever their most recently released console was, or Mortal Kombat having blood in it. This week, I played the latest game in the Pokemon franchise, Pokemon Unite, a free-to-play MOBA, which is a genre that even the people who like don't find fun. It's aimed at kids, it's all shiny and bright with their favourite characters gadding about, and it's exploitative as all hell. Seriously, I wouldn't let a kid near it, and I fucking hate kids, the grubby-handed little shits. Everything about it is designed to get under your skin, to make you terrified of missing out on the limited time rewards, to make you log in every day, to make you spin the gacha wheel, to specifically and ruthlessly target the vulnerable from a foundation built on the very concept of the fear of missing out. And that's fine, apparently. Everyone's praising it, even Polygon, and they're so good they wouldn't punch the reporter in Mass Effect. The line of acceptability has shifted, and it's shifted hard. If games were like this when I was a kid, I wouldn't be playing them now. Oh, and it's pay to win. Because of course it is, it's got like five currencies. You can literally buy items that make your Pokemon stronger forever, or you can unlock them in the game, but the rate of unlocking them is so fucking glacial that... Look, if this game's monetization was any more predatory, it would have appeared in Jeffrey Epstein's little black book. And speaking of Bobby Kotick, this week news was dominated by the following headline. Activision Blizzard sued by California over frat boy culture. Ah, frat boy culture. In my head that spawns wonderful images of Johnny Knoxville being shot out of a cannon, Steve-O letting off fireworks from his arsehole, or Dave England... Well, not... Dave England actually spawns horrific images that I never want to think about again. But the point still stands. Frat boy culture is dumb. It's young. It's loud. And it's pretty much harmless to everybody but themselves. Let's read some of this silly frat boy culture that Activision Blizzard is being accused of. And to just slightly kill the flow of this video a bit, we're about to talk about the things I mentioned at the start of the video. If that's not for you, duck out. This is going to get bad real quick. Deep breaths. Here we go. And remember, this is a fraction of what is being accused in a suit that has been two years in the making. In the office, women are subject to cube crawls, in which male employees drink copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behaviour towards female employees. Male employees proudly come into work hungover, play video games for long periods of time during work while delegating the responsibility to female employees, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk openly about female bodies and joke about rape. Ah. So not the jackass frat boy that I have in my head, they mean the textbook rapist, and I mean that literally Brock Turner type of frat boy. Here comes some more. Employees were further discouraged from complaining as human resource personnel were known to be close to alleged harassers. As a result of these complaints, female employees were subject to retaliation, including but not limited to being deprived of work on projects, unwillingly transferred to different units, and being selected for layoffs. Quick side note, HR is there to protect the company, not you. Never forget that. Anyway, outside Blizzard HQ, there is a big metal statue of an orc, and around it are the eight principles that they live by at Activision Blizzard. And one of them says, every voice matters. Should probably dig that one up. Uh, should probably dug that up with the whole fucking China-Hong Kong thing a few years back. But last one now, and this one isn't pleasant. In a tragic example of the harassment the defendants allowed to fester in their offices, a female employee committed suicide while on a company trip due to a sexual relationship she had with her male supervisor. The male supervisor was found by police to have a butt plug and lubricant on his business trip. Another employee confirmed that the deceased female employee may have been suffering from other sexual harassment at work prior to her death, specifically at a holiday party before her death, male co-workers were alleged to be passing around a picture of the deceased's vagina. Video games used to be so simple. Activision Blizzard have responded to these allegations, well, 
responded to Jason Schreier as he's one of the only games journalists who isn't just a PR mouthpiece. And you'll never guess what they tried to do. A woman is dead. An Activision Blizzard, a billion dollar company, play the victim. First, they say that they are sickened, of course, by the investigation, not the findings. Then they immediately cry distortion, say nothing is true, and then explain how they've changed for the better. I don't know why they bothered if nothing was true. Uh, and then they even threatened to leave California. Give me fucking strength. But then, this bit. This bit. Actually, first, just to let you know, in the background while I'm reading this out, I'm going to put up some tweets from previous employees of Activision Blizzard who have publicly been corroborating this story. Here's part of Activision Blizzard's response. We are sickened by the reprehensible conduct of DFEH, which is California's Department of Fair Employment and Housing, to drag into the complaint the tragic suicide of an employee whose passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case. Quick bit of advice here, bite down on a bullet or something for this next bit, because it's a fucking doozy. And with no regard for her grieving family. You... cunts. You cunts. Using a grieving family to defend a billion dollar company. You cunts. What we have here isn't just a failure of leadership. This has been allowed to happen. Hell, I've been doing this long enough to remember that old Bobby Kotick has a history of this. In 2007, he had to pay out when a flight attendant, Cynthia Madvig, who worked in his private jet, was sexually harassed. And when she complained about this, Bobby fired her. Here's some notes from that if you really want to know how much of a cunt this man really truly is. Kotick's then lawyer, Patricia Glasser, advised him to settle for $200,000 to $400,000, much less than it would cost to argue the toss in court. Kotick disagreed. According to the arbitrator, Mr. Kotick wanted to destroy the other side and not pay Miss Madvig anything. Mr. Kotick realised that this was not a good business proposition, but said that he was worth one and a half billion dollars and he didn't mind spending some of it on attorney's fees. So fucked off at that headline. Frat boy culture. Just guys being dudes. Guys being dudes. A woman was harassed to death. Guys being dudes. I wonder if she died before or after Kotick's $155 million bonus. On Twitch, my mods are like lifeguards. If someone is in the beach who shouldn't be there, they'll escort them away. If someone needs help, they'll be there to save them. Most of the time, it's casual, cool, a nice place. Talk to them, they'll be all like, ciao. Now... Have you ever seen the mods of a female gaming streamer a few minutes before they go live? It's like the fucking final scene of Blackadder goes forth. Talk to them and they'll look at you with a glazed expression and go, I am young. I am 20 years old. Yet I know nothing of life but despair, death, fear and fatuous superficiality cast over an abyss of sorrow. Fuck, you know. These workplace culture issues are men being enabled to be cunts. That's it. That's the rub. This industry attracts incredibly smart, wonderfully talented women, people of colour and LGBT folk, and then it just fucking hates them until they leave. But hey, the game made money, it got good reviews, so fuck it, let's change nothing. Men are the problem here. So who's fixing it? Is it the men? No, it's the people who are standing up, constantly, risking their livelihoods and future careers to more often than not get told to sit down by everyone from co-workers to HR. So what can we outside of the industry do? Well, we live, if you haven't noticed, in a capitalist hellscape that only speaks one language, and that's money. So vote with your wallets. But we need to go further. Tell your friends where you're not picking up the latest piece of Blizzard shit. Spread this story. Spread all of these stories. Spread everything that falls out of the arse of this industry as far as you can. And when someone involved starts to speak, shut the fuck up and listen until they've said everything they have to. Oh, and if you happen to be a YouTuber with a dwindling but still quite large following, maybe, finally, stop playing games made by these shitty fucking companies. Oh, but the people who worked on Watch Dogs Legion worked hard and fuck you. Enough. E fucking enough. No ethical consumption under capitalism isn't a fucking get out of jail free card for the things that you want to play. If you're aware of the exploitation, the moral thing to do is to stop consuming that product. Nestle uses slave and child labour, Amazon pays less tax than a fucking dog, and Ubisoft spent years protecting mental and physical abusers. Oh, and hey look everybody, it's happened with Ubisoft again! What's your excuse this time? Yes, I'm talking to myself, I need to be better. 
fuck my therapist is going to have a fucking field day with this one. In this life, you can only ever control yourself. So, ask yourself, am I comfortable supporting these companies anymore? Because I'm not. I've spent the last six hours reading into detail things that I've squeamishly avoided reading for far too long because it's hard and because I'm a coward. I am sorry it's taken me until now, but I am done. No more playing games here or on Twitch unless it's from a reputable, crunch and abuse-free studio. So basically just indies. <sighs> Look, I'll still report the news, but no one's getting free advertising from me anymore. As consumers, we have to demand better. We have to protect good people. Video games used to be simple, but now they aren't, and ignoring that doesn't make it go away. No more excuses. I've fucked this up for far too long. It's time to do better. And I tucked an all quiet on the Western Front quote in earlier, so here's another one to see us out. It is very queer that the unhappiness of the world is so often brought on by small men. I'll see you next week.